The following is a selected video from masterthecontent.com where you will find an extensive video library of lectures for a variety of standardized admission tests. We offer over 600 hours of detailed video lectures for a multitude of standardized tests. Use our interactive in-lecture table of contents to find specific topics of interest. Work through numerous in-lecture examples to help you internalize concepts. To learn more, visit masterthecontent.com. Your career, our passion. Now, let's begin here by taking a look at figure, at, uh, excuse me, at figure 18. A ray of light heading towards an object is called an incident ray. If it reflects off the object, it's called a reflected ray. A perpendicular line drawn at any point on a surface is known as the normal, just like with a uh, normal force. Now, the angle between the incident ray and the normal is called the angle of incidence and the angle between the reflected ray and the normal ray is called the angle of reflection. And experimental and electromagnetic theory demonstrate that the angle of incidence is the same as the angle of reflection. Now, that is what is known as the law of reflection. The law, as it says here, the law of reflection is the angle of in, uh, the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Let's continue now with uh, onto our next slide here. Now, the amount of uh, light that is being reflected by an object, and uh, we can even go on to say that how it's reflected is going to be dependent upon the smoothness or texture of the surface. Let's explain. Looking here at figure 19a, when a beam of parallel light rays reflect from a smooth surface, right, all the rays go off in the same direction. This is known as specular reflection. And it occurs with mirrors and other shiny surfaces because surface imperfections are smaller than the wavelength of the incident light. Therefore, virtually all of the light is reflected equally. However, uh, if you look here, most surfaces are rough and of those uh, surfaces, light reflects in almost all directions as we saw earlier with our uh, piece of paper and this is known as diffuse reflection and because diffuse uh, yeah because diffuse reflection sends light in all directions you can see illuminated objects from any direction as we had seen earlier most objects reflect some wavelengths of light more than others which is why we perceive colors meaning the uh, wavelengths of the reflected light determine the colors we see. For example, when if we look here at figure 19b, when white light is going to uh, hit an apple, for instance, primarily red wavelengths are reflected, while much of the other wavelengths of light are going to be absorbed. Next, let's take a look at selective absorption of colors in chlorophyll. Now, if you recall, chloroplasts are small organelles that are found in the cells of plants and algae, such as uh, in this species of uh, thyme moss, as we see here in Figure 20. Now, if we take a look, uh, a little, take a little bit of a deeper look over here in Figure 21, we can see the chloroplast visibly in the cell, right? Now, the chloroplasts are going to contain the molecule chlorophyll, uh, which is green in plants, and it uses solar energy to produce carbohydrates from uh, carbon dioxide and water. Anyhow, uh, getting to our point, if we come down here to figure uh, 22 for just a moment, we know that a beam of white light is composed of all wavelengths between 400 and 700 nanometers. Chlorophyll mainly absorbs light in the blue to near ultraviolet range, 350 to 400 nanometers, and also in the red light range, 650 to 700 nanometers. That means then the light in the middle of the visible spectrum here is reflected, thus plants appear green. Next, let's shift our attention towards refraction. Let's begin with a, a little bit of review, and then from there we'll take up for refraction, and then we'll take a look at the law of refraction.